Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and this is the third part of our short series on gastrointestinal stromal tumor. This is important because it's going to discuss on the tyrosine kinase inhibitors and therapy sequencing. So we have already seen the genetics of GIST in the first part and the diagnostic approach as well as the role of surgery in the second part. So now coming to medical management, whenever we want to give neoadjuvant therapy, as we have already discussed, we need a biopsy and we need a mutational analysis. Minimum duration of neoadjuvant therapy for response assessment is six months. Whenever you have a patient with locally advanced tumor with high surgical morbidity, as we discussed in the last video, you need neoadjuvant therapy. If you have significant metastatic disease or locally unresectable disease, again is an indication for neoadjuvant therapy. Recurrences need medical management, so that is again an indication. If the patient has undergone surgery and is high risk for recurrence or metastasis, then the patient needs adjuvant therapy for which the minimum duration is three years. There are studies where the therapy has been extended up to five years. This is important for intermediate and high-risk GIS after R0 or R1 resection. So risk depends on the mitotic count, the size of the tumor, the site of the tumor. As we already saw, gastric GIS have better prognosis than small intestinal, which has better prognosis than rectal tumors. Okay, All GIS are malignant tumors, but mitotic count and the size and site are essentially the parameters which help in giving the risk stratification. A very simple concept is 55 okay, for stomach and 25 for all other GIS. What I mean is if size is more than 5 cm and mitosis is more than 5, 55, then the gastric gist is high risk. For 25, that is size more than 2 cm, with mitosis more than 5 cm, then your all other gists are high risk. If you are seeing isolated points, then size more than 10 cm and mitosis more than 10 cm. So 55, 25, 10, 10. That is how you can remember this risk stratification. Right. So what we have seen, 5, 5 okay, for stomach or 10 centimeter is high risk, right? So 5, 5 or 10. And for other organs, it is 2, 5, okay, 25 or 10. So that is how you have to remember 55 for stomach, 10 centimeter or 10 mitosis for any gist and 25 for small intestine and rectum, right? So now coming to medical therapy. Imatinib, all of these are tyrosine kinase inhibitors. The median duration of therapy is three years and minimum duration of neoadjuvant therapy is six months. You don't need to stop imatinib prior to surgery. Sunitinib and regorafenib need to be stopped a week prior. When the standard dosing are considered, imatinib standard dose is 400 milligram per day. Whereas double dose imatinib or maximum tolerable imatinib when patient does not respond to standard imatinib is 800 mg per day. Cardiotoxicity is most serious toxicity. Other agents that are available as sunitinib, regorafenib, sorafenib, desatinib, nilotinib, azopenib, evapritinib and ripretinib. The last two have been added recently in the NCCN guidelines. So now we look at the sequencing of therapy where these drugs are required. The first line therapy is 400 mg per day imatinib for kit and PDGFRA mutation except exot 18 mutation which is resistant to imatinib. So for this mutation, evapritinib is the first line therapy, right? 800 mg per day imatinib is the first line therapy for documented exon 9 mutation. So remember these three points, 400 mg per day imatinib for all patients other than exon 18 mutation, PDGFRA where evapritinib is used and exon 9 mutation where double dose imatinib is used. Now going to wild type kit and PDGFRA, if you have an NTRK gene fusion positive, then lerotrectinib or entrectinib is the first line therapy. Sunitinib is the first line therapy for SDH deficient gist and debrafenib and trematinib combination 
is the first line therapy for B rep mutated gist. Okay. So for wild kit and PDGFRA, the drugs are different. And for kit and PDGFRA mutations, the drugs are imatinib or evapritinib. Right. So this is the first line therapy that we select based on the various mutations. Now on progression, sunitinib is the second line therapy for all patients who received imatinib first line therapy. Okay. So this is very important that second line therapy as for us is sunitinib. For evapritinib, the second line therapy is desatinib. Okay. Only for patients who do not tolerate sunitinib, major side effect is hypertension, then repretinib 150 OD can be started as a second line therapy. Otherwise, repretinib is approved as fourth line therapy. So patients should have received three tyrosine kinase inhibitors and not responded to them before shifting to repretinib, which is a recently FDA approved drug. Okay. But for second line therapy, if patients are not tolerant to sunitinib, then repretinib 150 can be used. Okay. So second line therapy, there are two important drugs, sunitinib and desatinib. Sunitinib versus imatinib and desatinib versus evapritinib. Okay. Third line therapy is radiology, that is intervention and regorafenib. So if you have liver lesions, the interventions can be used. We will see in the next slide. And regorafenib is the medical management third line therapy. As I already said, repretinib is the fourth line medical therapy. Patients should have received at least three tyrosine kinase inhibitors before starting repretinib. Okay. As a fifth step, if patient still progresses further, you can restart imatinib as a rechallenge therapy. And other options based on what the patient has not received prior, you can use evapritinib, cabozantinib. Other option is combination of evrolimus with TKI, nilotinib, pezopanib. You can increase the dose of repretinib to 150 BD, sorafenib, and for exon 11 mutation, you have ponatinib. Okay, so this is a very important slide, a lot of MCQs and a lot of practical points. First line therapy, we saw imatinib, okay, sunitinib and evapritinib. For imatinib, second line therapy is sunitinib or repretinib. And for evapritinib, the second line is desertinib, right? Third line is regorafenib, fourth line is repretinib and fifth line is all other drugs that we have discussed. A very brief about interventional therapy, it is used for unrejectable liver metastasis or when patient is not fit for surgery or is progressing on the first two lines of therapy. So it is the third line of therapy, taste, air and ablation, any of them can be used based on feasibility. Follow up usually is three to six monthly scans and clinical evaluation for first two years and then annually for three to five years. Recurrence, 40 to 50% recurrence rates are there and this is usually due to an undetected tumor rupture or spillage. Like I said, rectum is most common for worse prognosis than small bowel and then stomach. High mitosis and larger size of tumor can have earlier recurrence. Standard of treatment for recurrence is imatinib. The site of first recurrence is in the abdomen and it can involve peritoneum liver or both. So, over these three different videos, we have seen some very important points about this, very practical points about sequencing of therapies and a lot of multiple choice questions like Carney's trial, Carney's stratakis syndrome in the first part, diagnosis and IHC and mutational analysis and the sequencing and therapy points based on genetic analysis in this part. So I hope this series helps you in understanding the gist. If you have not seen the previous two parts, please do have a look. Thank you.